Welcome to the exciting world of aviation. Have you ever looked up at a plane and wondered how it stays up? It's like magic, right? Well, not really. It's all about science and engineering. And understanding some key terms is the first step to unraveling the mysteries of flight. We're going to explore some important aviation terminology that will help you understand how airplanes fly. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as you might think. Just like learning a new language, understanding aviation starts with learning the basic words. Once you know the lingo, you'll be able to understand how airplanes work. We'll keep things simple and use everyday examples so you can impress your friends with your newfound aviation knowledge. So buckle up and let's get started. This journey into the world of aviation begins with the basics, understanding the language of flight. Think of it like learning a new language. Before you can form sentences, you need to know the meaning of individual words. Similarly, to grasp the complexities of flight, we must first familiarize ourselves with the fundamental terminology. By the end of this essay, you'll be able to differentiate between a wingspan and an airfoil, understand the crucial role of camber, and confidently discuss angles of attack and incidents. So let's embark on this exciting journey and equip ourselves with the knowledge to decode the fascinating world of aviation. Our first stop is the airfoil. This is the shape you see when you look at a plane's wing from the side. The airfoil is the key to flight, as it's specifically designed to generate lift. Imagine a bird's wing. Its curved shape helps it soar through the air. Similarly, an airfoil's unique shape helps an airplane take to the skies. Now let's break down the airfoil further. The front edge of the airfoil is called the leading edge. It's the part that first meets the air as the plane moves forward. The back edge is called the trailing edge. The line connecting the leading edge to the trailing edge is called the cord line. This line is important for understanding the airfoil's shape and how it generates lift. Moving on, let's talk about camber. Camber refers to the curvature of the airfoil. If you look at the airfoil from the side, you'll notice that the top surface is usually more curved than the bottom surface. This difference in curvature is what we call camber. The upper camber refers to the curvature of the top surface, while the lower camber refers to the curvature of the bottom surface. Why is camber important? Well, it's this curvature that helps generate lift. The curved shape of the airfoil forces the air flowing over the top to travel a longer distance than the air flowing underneath. This difference in distance creates a difference in air pressure, with lower pressure on top and higher pressure below. This pressure difference is what generates lift, allowing the airplane to stay airborne. Now let's talk about the wingspan. The wingspan is the distance between the wingtips of an aircraft. It's a simple concept but crucial in aviation. Imagine stretching your arms out to the sides. That's essentially what wingspan is for an airplane. The larger the wingspan, the more air the wings can grab which is especially important for generating lift at slower speeds during takeoff and landing. Another important term is wing area, which refers to the total surface area of the wings. Think of it as the amount of fabric needed to cover the entire wing surface. Wing area is calculated by multiplying the wingspan by the average cord length. A larger wing area generally means more lift, which is why gliders and aircraft designed for short takeoffs and landings often have larger wings. Section 4, Wing Planform and Aspect Ratio Explained. Next up is Planform. Imagine looking down at an airplane from above. The shape you see is the wing planform. It can be rectangular, elliptical, tapered, or even swept back, each shape influencing the aircraft's performance. For instance, swept back wings are often found on faster aircraft, like jet fighters, as they help reduce drag at high speeds. Closely related to Planform is the Aspect Ratio. This is the ratio of the wingspan to the average cord length. In simpler terms, it describes how long and slender the wing is. A high aspect ratio wing is long and thin, like that of a glider, while a low aspect ratio wing is short and stubby, like that of many fighter jets. The aspect ratio plays a crucial role in determining an aircraft's performance. High aspect ratio wings are more efficient in generating lift and have less induced drag, making them ideal for soaring in long-range flights. Low aspect ratio wings on the other hand are more maneuverable and can handle higher speeds, making them suitable for aircraft that need to turn quickly and fly at high speeds. Section 5, Angles in Aviation Incidents and Relative Air 